Welcome to a session about building awesome data-driven applications using the latest database services that Google Cloud has to offer. My name is Gurmeet Goindi, I go by Gigi, and I have the honor of having my colleague join me in this journey, Yoav. Good to see you, Gigi. Likewise. So let's explain what we mean by data-driven apps, because it's a pretty good assumption that every app reads and writes data of some kind. But I suspect many of us could do more to analyze that data and make it useful. We want to look at three representative examples. Example one is fraud detection for credit card transactions. Let's say there's a purchase of a gym membership on my credit card, and the credit card company wants to check if it's legit. When did you go to gym last, you have? Well, you know, I'm planning to do more exercise. Okay. The point here is to collect all the data that can be useful, what the credit card company knows about gym purchases, and what it knows about me. The second example is a reporting example. Let's say a DVD store wants to see which DVD is selling better, Avatar The Way of Water or Top Gun Maverick. Did you say DVD? Have you heard of this thing called screaming before? Well, you know, our team likes old-fashioned examples. So we want to put all the sales data in one place, and then we can run any report that we want. Example three is pricing analysis. Let's say that I'm planning a coupon to increase sales. I want it to increase profits, not decrease profit, right? So what's better, 1% off or 2% off? In this case, the example is about running analysis on my data based on some statistical model. If you look at where the data is coming from today, traditionally developers had to work with two separate types of stores. One for handling transactional applications that run the business, and the other is a data warehouse to provide insights on how well the business is doing. And uh, what about data lakes and lake houses and object storage and all of those things? Yes, there are many places where data could be, but let's start by focusing on the very common scenario that we have here. It actually works pretty well, but it also comes with the overhead of managing, monitoring, and keeping these stores in sync, and let's not forget about security. I heard it's important. But with the advancement in cloud technologies, the boundaries between these stores are blurring. And that provides us the opportunity to make things easier for our customers. So speaking of that, we actually made some predictions about that. I'm sure all of you read every Google Cloud blog, so you could not have possibly missed these predictions we made in December. But just to recap, our technology experts made 10 predictions for the next few years of IT. You can see the link in the description below. There were two predictions that we want to call out because they're very relevant to what we're discussing here. Making decisions based on your application data. The one on the left was from Andy Goodmans, the VP and GM for database products at Google Cloud. He predicted that the barriers between transactional and analytical workloads will mostly disappear. You know, the two locations that Gigi just mentioned. The one on the right was from Richard Soroder of our developer relations and outbound PM team. He predicted that multi-cloud technologies will make it possible to freely switch your primary cloud provider. So if you're not able or not willing to put everything on one cloud, you'll have the means to move it anywhere you want. Obviously, this also applies to your data. It can be generated by multiple apps on multiple clouds or outside the cloud. And you should be able to analyze it wherever you want. So let's start with the first prediction. Let's say that I have a database, probably many databases, and a data warehouse. How do I analyze data that's coming from both sides? Let's go knock down some barriers. The three examples that we started with just happen to match the three best ways to integrate databases and data warehouses. Wow, well, what are the odds? It's a perfect match. No match fixing here at all. So in the first example, where we flag credit card transactions, we will use federated queries, meaning that we will query across database and the data warehouse. In the second example, where we run report from our DVD sales, we will be streaming replication, meaning that we will stream data from our databases to your data warehouse. I do know what streaming is, Gigi. I'm glad, I'm glad to hear that. And in the third example, where we do a pricing analysis, we will use integrated analytics, which means we can skip the data warehouse because your database is really good at running analytical queries. With that, let's dive in. From a database nerd like me, federated queries are really exciting. We are bringing to fruition of how you can gather meaningful insights by combining historical data that's been sitting in your data warehouse systems, such as BigQuery, with data that is still being created within your transactional system, such as Cloud Spanner or Cloud SQL. So I see that this query combines customer data from BigQuery with sales order data from Cloud SQL. It seems to be the canonical example of a federated query. 
I'm sure it is. Even if I asked Bart about federated queries, it gave exactly the same examples. If you want to correlate customer buying behavior, say with their most recently placed orders, you can do that by joining the customer buying behavior data stored in BigQuery with the customer order table stored in Cloud SQL for Postgres by exuding a simple external query in BigQuery to call into Cloud SQL. And voila, you have your answer. No pipelines, no ETL jobs, no data movement. And we even push down SQL processing to Cloud SQL from BigQuery. The cool thing is that the data doesn't need to be moved. It's queried all in place. Also check out federated queries between Bigtable and BigQuery, which uses a very similar mechanism called external tables. Okay, let's move on to the second method. This one is based on replicating the data, or at least some of it, from our operational database to our data warehouse. We do that by streaming every change as it happens. On Google Cloud, you can use DataStream, a cloud service that, you know, streams data. It's super easy to set up. You define which data sources to stream from and where to stream to, and it starts to securely replicate your data. It's completely serverless and even tracks schema changes in your database. You'll notice in the data stream screenshot that we're replicating from an AlloyDB database to BigQuery. We're replicating all the information about our DVD sales, actors, films, customer data, inventory information, and all of that. Amazing. It makes me wonder, when is streaming the application better than validated queries? I would say that streaming is a good solution if we don't want to decide ahead of time which reports we're going to run. Maybe I want to compare two movies today, like Avatar versus Top Gun, but tomorrow I'll want to run a report about inventory levels or something else. So I just want all the data in BigQuery, and then I can run any report that I want. And the data will be fresh because it's streamed continuously into BigQuery. Well, I know who not to take to movie theaters with me, given your movie choices. Let's take this one step further. What about a world where you can run meaningful analytics, or one might say operational analytics, right against your transaction database. No streaming changes, no setting up pipelines, no federation of anything. With that in mind, we developed the columnar engine for our AlloyDB database. AlloyDB's columnar engine makes your analytical queries run up to 100x faster by keeping frequently queried data in an in-memory columnar format for faster scans, joins, and aggregation. It's right there in the database for you to use. Okay, let's put integrated analytics aside for a moment. Can you tell us more about what AlloyDB is? Would love to. AlloyDB is our fully managed Postgres compatible database that we built to help you cost effectively modernize from legacy databases or scale your existing Postgres apps. It's Google's newest cloud database with all the goodness of Postgres and all the goodness of Google technology. And in our performance test, OIDB is four times faster than standard Postgres and two times faster than Amazon's comparable Postgres, compatible service for transactional workloads. I think I know which service you mean, Gigi. I'm sure you do, yes, that one. And OIDB is up to 100 times faster for analytical queries and scales to thousands of eCPUs for read workloads. It also provides a four nines, no nonsense SLA, which is inclusive of maintenance. And we took a hard look at how we can remove or reduce toil for Postgres developers and brought in a ton of machine learning algorithms for vacuum management, memory management, and how you move data across caching tiers and storage tiers. Lastly, we integrated a Vertex AI service so developers can invoke Vertex AI models straight from the SQL query. Nice. So let's go back to the other prediction about multi-cloud. I think we've presented some good options today for running data-driven apps on Google Cloud, but it breaks my heart to admit that some databases are not on Google Cloud, and some analytics don't run there either. Maybe they never will. You've seen several scenarios, Gigi, where they need to run in other places, right? Correct. Sometimes people can't move to the cloud as fast as they want. Their workloads are restricted to on-premises data centers because of the complexity of their applications, the complexity of their network topologies, or the need to run on multiple clouds, or need to run in disconnected fashion due to regulatory or data sovereignty requirements. Or they may be running their applications at the edge, like a retail store or a telco facility. 
Customers tell us that they want to eliminate unfriendly licensing relationships, expensive fees, vendor lock-in faster than they're able to de-platform everything to cloud. And they've asked us to find a path to support them in their in-place modernization journey with LIDB. They also want us to support of a tier one provider like Google when they are on this modernization journey with LIDB. So with that, we're really excited to tell you about AlloyDB Omni, a downloadable version of AlloyDB that you can run anywhere. We introduced it a few weeks ago, but wanted to give some more information today that'll be useful for application developers. AlloyDB Omni uses the same engine as the cloud version of AlloyDB, and it's still 100% compatible with Postgres. It's based on the Postgres kernel and uses the same wire protocol, and it supports Postgres extensions and flags. But it's more than two times faster than Postgres for transactional workloads, and it's up to 100 times faster for analytical queries because it includes the AlloyDB columnar engine. Wait, Yav, did you say a downloadable version? Aren't we like a cloud company? We are but we want to meet people where they are. Sometimes you need to modernize an older application without moving it to the cloud. And it's not your imagination, we actually have AWS and Azure logos here. AlloyDB Omni will run great on those clouds. Yeah, I was wondering about this logos. I also noticed that the slide says more than 2x faster than Postgres, but LIDB in the cloud is 4x faster than Postgres. Thanks for paying attention. It's because of the difference between the high-performance storage that we have in Google Cloud and the storage available on-premises. The cloud scales so much better. Still, it's a huge performance gain in both cases. And in terms of price, AlloyDB Omni is an enterprise-level database at a fraction of the cost of legacy databases. So it's a great way to modernize applications to Postgres. You might be wondering what the installation is like. Nobody wants to go back to the old-school installation scripts. We tried to make LIDB Omni as easy to install and use as possible. It's packaged as a container. All one needs to do is install Docker, pull the container repository, download and run the installer. And there you have a commercial grade database up and running to handle some of your most demanding web applications under five minutes. To patch your database, just repeat steps two to four and you're good to go. And now that you have a downloadable database that runs analytical queries up to 100 times faster, your decision making is much closer to real time. You can get business insights from your operational data by running queries directly on the database. And by the way, I was looking for a way to illustrate a 100x difference in speed. So I looked up the speed of a Boeing 787 on Wikipedia, and it has a maximum speed of 690 miles per hour. A good runner can do about 6.9 miles per hour which is uh, equivalent to finishing a marathon in just under four hours. Yeah, we don't want our customer queries to feel like a real marathon. Exactly. Now, you, have, you may wonder how we do this, how we make the analytics go 100x faster, so let's take a deeper look there. We implemented the engine as a Postgres extension, so it's transparent to your apps and they don't need any code changes to use it. Secondly, the machine learning algorithms move the data between DRAM, the ultra-fast cache, and the storage depending on your usage pattern, giving you the performance of memory and the scale and economics of persistent storage. Processors for a long time have been shipping with SIMD instruction set, which makes vectorized operations go really fast. Now, if these operations are executed against data stored in in-memory columns, then we can speed up those operations by a couple of orders of magnitude. LIDB builds on these hardware enhancements and brings this technology to Postgres and extends to the LIDB Omni where you can extract a lot more value out of a CPU no matter where you run your workload. We also took this opportunity to bring in some of the unique techniques like storing min-max values and learn metadata alongside the data stored in the columnar structure to further give you an intelligent response from the columnar engine. These techniques for a long time were only available in expensive commercial databases. And all of the other benefits with the added advantage of Google machine learning makes the user experience simple and transparent. So all of that is happening behind the scenes and I don't need to do anything? Exactly. Let me give you an example of a machine learning algorithm in LRDB. The LIDB memory manager uses machine learning to predict your memory usage and automatically adjust memories required for your OS or system task versus the database, almost completely preventing the dreaded art of memory events or rooms 
Or you might also say no more ooms and no more oops. As with all things ML, these algorithms will keep getting better over time, but don't take my word for it. Let's do a quick demo, courtesy of a colleague, Randall. And remember your analysis, of your example you have of an analyzing discounts, 1% is better or 2%. Let's run that one on LIDB Omni's Kalmar engine and see what we get. Well, thank you. And welcome to this demonstration of how fast analytics are on LEDB Omni. LEDB Omni is Postgres compatible. You can see here I'm running PG Admin, which is an advanced Postgres application for managing Postgres. I'm managing several Postgres instances, including an LEDB instance on our cloud service, and this instance, which is actually running on my Windows laptop with a Debian Linux virtual machine. This is the platform where I'm going to be doing this demo. You don't need a big hardware platform to run AlloyDB Omni. It'll run anywhere you want, including on the edge. So for this demonstration, I loaded a TPCH database with the free HammerDB tool. I loaded over a billion rows into the database. You could run this very same benchmark using the same tools. The scenario is that I'm running an online store that's very, very busy on Black Friday. Thousands of orders are being entered. I want to find out right now, if I give a larger discount, will I actually get more revenue? All right, so let's run this query and find out how long it takes to run without the columnar engine. And as you can see, it is running. It's going to take a long time. I'm going to use the miracle of video editing to move forward into the future so you don't have to wait for the query to finish. OK, we're back. The query ran in quite a long period of time. It ran in nine minutes and 56 seconds. That's pretty long. And the result, though, was encouraging. When I offered a 2% discount, I did indeed get more revenue than with a 1% discount. Well, something else happened while we were waiting for the query to finish. There was an outage, and priority one trouble tickets were filed. Users could no longer enter new orders, and I caused it by running these analytical queries. Let's take a look at the top command in Linux. Very little of the CPU is available, maybe 12%, and there's massive waiting for I.O. So now, let's see how fast this query runs with the columnar engine. I don't need to make any code changes. It automatically uses the columnar engine if it's appropriate. OK, how fast is it going to run? The other query without the columnar engine ran in over nine minutes. Let's see. Click. Boom. Less than a second. There's even more good news. I don't have to have indexes on these columns. So if I do have them for analytics, I can drop those indexes, and my transactions get faster in the system. So not only is the columnar engine really fast, it can make the entire database faster. And with AlloyDB Omni, it actually gets faster the more you use it due to the autopilot machine learning algorithms that are managing the database. Well, AlloyDB Omni sure is fast. Give it a try. You can download it right now. Thanks so much for watching. You can always take it for a spin because AlloyDB Omni is free for developer use. And we, as we said earlier, it's really easy to get set up and get started. So if you're eager to give this product a try, this is how. We put a link in the description below. Go there, sign up, and give us your feedback. Now you can make both of the predictions we talked about come true. Remove the barriers between transactional and analytical workloads and run the same database, AlloyDB, everywhere, on and off Google Cloud. And before we go, we also want to invite you to check out our entire database product line. We mentioned several services today, Cloud SQL, AlloyDB, Spanner, Bigtable, DataStream. Those are all relational or key value. You can explore additional options here. There are in-memory and document database options, and a database migration service to help you migrate from other databases to Google Cloud. Thanks, everyone, for joining our session. It's always fun for us to talk about databases and the innovation that is happening in this field. We hope we spark some ideas and concepts that you can leverage in your application development journey. Have a great Google I.O. and see you at Google next. Bye-bye.